What's up, y'all? It's Dr. Paul with Liberty Hill Comics, where I share my passion and over 40 years of experience comic book collecting, investing, and conservation with you. Today, we're going to be continuing our new Golden Age comic book conservation project on this copy of All Star Comics number 55 from 1950. Today, we're going to have a look at how the rest of the interior wraps, which I cleaned and in the case of the centerfold, did archival tear seals and reinforcement off camera turned out. Then we'll assemble all of our pages and reinstall the staples in preparation for restoration of the spine fold and final press. I'm going to try a different method for staple reinsertion today, so stick around if you, like me, struggle with staple reinsertion and want to see me try a new technique. Thank you for joining me. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. If you are subscribed to the channel, thank you sincerely. If you hit the bell icon, you'll be notified when we have new videos going up. And if you're not subscribed yet, please do so. It helps us reach a wider audience here on YouTube and create more of a community around our favorite hobby, comic book conservation. In case you missed it, in episode one of this series, we did a complete walkthrough of the book, assessed the condition, paying special attention to any defects that affect grade, as well as use of the comic book and permanence of the paper. We determined we had a mostly solid and complete comic book that presented reasonably well and could be read with some care, but with some significant flaws. These include a severe spine roll, a piece missing to the cover, some chipping along the right edge of the front cover, and a severely tanned cover to the point of the paper being brown in the most severely tanned areas. The interior pages were, for the most part, beautiful, with off-white to cream pages and only a few minor flaws, including a pulled top staple on the centerfold and a few very small tears on the reading edge of the first few wraps. We estimated the grade at approximately a 3.0 or good, very good. We developed a conservation plan for this comic book that includes assessment and documentation, disassembly, wet clean and deacidification of the cover with tear seals and paper reinforcement, and the same treatment of the interior wraps as well. After we get everything cleaned, mended, and dried back out, we'll reassemble the book without the spine roll and give it a good finishing press. If the conservation is successful, we can expect a comic book that has cleaner and brighter paper with a new lease on life, usability, and permanence. The comic should have an improved grade and also be easier to read without risking further damage, and the natural lifespan of the comic should be extended by a century or so by virtue of the deacidification we'll perform. It should also present much better and all around be a better collectible. I intend to send it to CGC to be graded and enter it into my CGC registry collection as a placeholder until I can find a high grade copy of this rare comic book for my collection. In episode two of this project, we disassembled the comic book, setting the staples aside for reassembly, preserving their location and orientation information. Then, we did a few more measurements of the paper quality and dimensions of the cover and set it aside for deacidification, tear seals, and reinforcement at a later date. In episode 3, we did an aqueous deacidification bath of the first interior wrap with a calcium hydroxide solution and also performed archival tear seals with Japanese paper and a methyl cellulose glue. These methods are reversible and considered by CGC as conservation, so when performed correctly, do not result in a purple, restored label if you submit to CGC for grading, which we intend to do with this book. In episode 4, we reviewed the results from our wet clean and tear seal procedures on the first inner wrap, and I showed you the method I use for washing the rest of the inner wraps in a fraction of the time, by washing two wraps at a time and using a surfactant and warm water. I also showed you how to use a heated press to speed up dry time dramatically. 
This Golden Age treasure has 12 inner wraps plus the cover. So these techniques will help us get the entire book conserved in a reasonable amount of time so we can get it off to CGC. In episode 5, we returned to work on the cover. We took some additional measurements of the dimensions of the cover, and then we wet cleaned and deacidified the cover before moving on to paper mending. We reinforced the entire spine with Japanese paper and methyl cellulose glue. We also performed tear seals and reinforced the right edge of the front cover where there was considerable damage to the paper owing to the significant spine roll this book experienced at some point in its nearly 74 year history. In episode 6 we looked at the results of our rapid wet clean and deacidification and quantified the paper quality for the different wash methods we used on the interior wraps and concluded there was no discernible difference between the traditional and rapid wash and dry. We then moved on to review the results of the archival wet clean deacidification, tear seals and paper reinforcement with Japanese paper and methyl cellulose of the cover. We trimmed the excess Tengujo paper from the cover and took height and width measurements. We concluded there were no discernible dimensional changes of our cover after all of our conservation procedures, contrary to conventional wisdom that aqueous bath will tend to result in dimensional changes in Golden Age comic book covers. Lastly, we looked at the paper quality of the cover before and after conservation. We used no harsh chemical or photo bleaching, and our goal was to deacidify the cover and restore paper permanence while preserving the beautiful vibrant inks and gloss of the cover. This meant only a modest whitening of the paper, but I think the result is a very satisfying creamy paper that connotes the age of the comic book while still presenting as supple and pliable. I've created a playlist for this project. You can check it out to see all the videos in the series by following the link in the upper right hand corner of the screen. All right, let's get to work. I've retrieved all of the pages from my cold press where they reside between these pages of 11 by 17 inch Bristol cardstock. And this is just where I store all of them while I finish them up. So now that all the wraps are complete, I'll retrieve them all from the stack and we can start preparing to put the staple back in. I'm just going to show you the first three here and then I'll do the rest of the wraps off camera. There you can see the covers on the right. There's the first interior wrap. I tend to keep these in order when I put them. So here's the second interior wrap and etc. And here's the finished product. This is all 13 total wraps, 12 interior plus the cover. And I'm really pleased with the outcome here, but before we reinsert the staples, let's do a few more measurements. I'm going to do one more width measurement of the cover. And it did spend another week in Bristol paper. It's just slightly less wide than it was the last time I measured it by maybe a 32nd of an inch. This reinforces for me even more that we've had no dimensional change. But the main reason I'm measuring the cover is because I also want to measure the width of the centerfold. And you've heard me talk before about how all these pages are not the same width. And that's because the paper is folded and then cut. So the thickness of the fold on the spine, each page is that much thinner as you go toward the centerfold. And it's really remarkable. So for the cover, we had a width of just a little bit over 14 and 3 16 inches. And for the centerfold, incredibly, we have a width of a little less than 13 and 7 8 inches. That means the difference in width between the cover and the centerfold is approximately 3 8 of an inch. And this is relevant because this is one of the reasons why it's so difficult to reinsert staples in these Golden Age comic books after finishing the inner wrap conservation. Not only are the staple holes often closed back together, but 
you just can't level the pages from side to side because there is over a quarter inch difference in the widest to the narrowest of the pages and your staple holes will not align properly. So what are we going to do about it? Well, I have here a light box. This is for viewing slides and negatives. They're not that expensive. I happen to have purchased this one a long time ago. And you see that when you put the paper down on it, and especially when you press it tight, you can see the remnants of the old holes. So what I've done is I've taken the center fold and placed it face down. And I've taken the next wrap in and put it on top and I've aligned the holes and I just have a needle and I'm going to insert the needle in the holes in the same direction that we would normally have the paper punctured by a staple. And that's important because we're not really removing paper, right? We're just pushing the flaps down out of the way and I want them to have a natural way in which the paper goes in toward the centerfold in the same way that it would when it's manufactured and that staple originally pierces it. So as you can see I'm just going to build the comic book up from the centerfold to the cover with each subsequent wrap and I can see the light through the box and align these staple holes more or less perfectly and reinforce them with this needle before moving on to the next wrap. Now we have 13 total pages to do here, 12 interior wraps plus the cover. So I think I'm going to show you these ones in the middle at a slightly faster pace and I'll just give you the highlights as we go and we'll slow it back down as we wrap this activity up. So I'm showing you these wraps at 8x normal speed and I'm really pleased with how this is going. I think this is worth the time for a golden age book like this and it might be that some books you don't need to do this. Sometimes they line up a lot easier but I just felt these pages Two of these wraps were miscut a little bit along the bottom edge, so they really couldn't even be properly leveled on the top or bottom. And the fact that I couldn't level them top or bottom or left or right made me just a lot more comfortable doing it this way. Now, at this point, the amount of light coming through the pages from the light box is getting a little bit dim, and it's getting difficult to see the light from the light box all the way through the whole stack of pages with my studio lighting on. So I turned my studio lighting off and I'm essentially shooting this video in the dark with just the light box on. And now you can see a little bit more what I saw while I was doing this work. It may look in the video with the studio lighting on that I didn't have a really good view of these holes for some of those wraps between the first and second and this one here but I actually could see the light quite well it just didn't show up probably on video all that well because I had the studio lighting on so I believe we just have two more wraps and we'll have this comic book ready to receive staples which is really exciting and again I think this is worth the time for a golden age book like this where presentation is really important and obviously it's an important book where we're willing to invest the effort to get a really good outcome. This took me about 20 minutes but to be fair a lot of that is setting it up so that I can record it and you can see it quite easily. If I were doing this just on my studio workbench I don't think it would take me quite that long and again I think it would be a very reasonable investment of my time and believe it or not we're ready for the cover already so the cover alignment was a little bit tricky because we 
repaired the entire spine and reinforced it with Japanese paper. The original staple holes are completely covered. These two were relatively easy to align and they were obvious where the staple was residing. I think because of that severe spine roll, the staple had torn the page, the cover that is, and at the top, the staple was not residing where it had originally been when we took the book apart relative to where it was manufactured. So now I'm retrieved my bottom staple. I'm going to place this bottom staple and leave it in place just to hold all the wraps without folding the arms back down and then I'll deal with the top staple. So this will be sort of a way to keep all the pages aligned while I work on placing this, the top staple. And I'm having trouble getting the second arm in, so I'm going to go back to dark room just so I can see the light through all the wraps better. Satisfied with that. Satisfied rather that I have my alignment really where I want it. I have a little more confidence to press the staple in. And that's all it took. Then I have one staple in and all my wraps where I think I want them. Now we may shift them a little bit because there is just a little degree of freedom of movement of the wraps and we still don't have the cover in its final placement. And so that's why I don't want to bend those arms down just yet. From the inside, the alignment looks quite good. I'm going to continue to check top and bottom. The bulk of the interior wraps should align with the top of the cover and the bottom of the cover. Left to right, of course, the cover will be larger than the wrap dimensions. So we just want to make those gaps as even as we can. But during manufacturing, it may not have been even either. So at this point, we're just trying to go for the best presentation we can get. Something that looks like a neat book rather than a haphazard stack of pages. Again, recognizing that it may have been manufactured like a haphazard stack of pages. So I'm reasserting here with the needle. the staple holes for the cover. Those of course have been completely blocked off by the paper mending we did. The tear seals with the Japanese paper and methyl cellulose. So I'm ensuring that I have reasonable holes now that align with the interior wraps. While the cover is held in a reasonable spot with respect to the wraps in terms of the alignment, especially top and bottom. And then I'm ready to retrieve my top staple and place it. One thing that I've noticed, the staple as it originally punctures the paper seems to have a smaller width as it enters than when it's finished. And it might be a matter of how the staple gets bent as it's piercing all of the paper, I'm not sure. But it's always a struggle and anybody who's watched the channel or watched any similar videos knows everybody I think that I know of anyway that does comic book conservation, disassembly and reassembly struggles with this a little bit. So I'm happy with the way that this went together and I think I would do this again depending on what the specific situation with the book is. But I think in this instance, definitely this book was worth doing it this way. There we go. I've got both my staples in. And I can move this book now off of this little light box over to my normal workbench with my hobby mat. 
and bend those staple arms down. All right, here we go with studio lighting on my regular workbench. And again, I'm just going to take a few moments. The, the pages still have a little bit of degree of freedom. So I'm going to take a few moments to align them, top and bottom especially, and then try to make sure that they have even spacing left to right because they're not going to line up perfectly with the edges. And when I'm finally satisfied with that, I'll make sure that the staples are vertical and then I'll be ready to bend these staple arms back down. I'm going to use this block of Delrin that I just drilled a small hole in and I'm just going to press that staple arm down with my fingers and as I press it down I guide it right into the witness marks on the paper where it used to reside before. And then if I don't feel I can get it really tight with my fingers, I'll use a little piece of bamboo to gently just press the arm down to seat it properly. And that gives it enough pressure to pinch all the pages right where they are so that they're not moving around once the staples are installed. I'll do the same on the top staple. And then I'm going to use this capable staple tool from Rick Morgan over at Immaculate Comics to just hold the bent arm in place with the paper while I bend the second arm down for top and bottom. And I don't always use the bamboo stick. If I feel like I got the staple in good spot, I won't bother with it. And I'm really pleased with this result. These pages are really nicely aligned, leveled beautifully. Look at the gloss on this cover. I really didn't show that off after the cleaning, but it's beautiful. I hope you enjoyed this video on the new method of staple reinsertion I tried out today. I think this is better than what I've done in the past, and although a bit time consuming, I'm really pleased with the results. For important books like this Golden Age issue of All Star Comics, I think this is the way to go. Next episode, we'll put a spine fold back in this comic book and give it a final press. I've added a link in the video description to a light box like the one I used today. If anyone wants to give this method a try and needs a light box, I appreciate you using those affiliate links. In fact, you can use them for any of your Amazon shopping to help provide just a little bit of financial support to the channel. If you enjoyed this video, please take a few seconds to give it a thumbs up, leave me a comment, and please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Until next time, take care of one another.